Welcome kindreds, it's Jessica. The Sagittarius full moon is just around the corner, so I've got my ritual planner out and I'm gonna have a little look at this energy, what's coming up for this full moon. I'm gonna use my ritual planner for this video. I'll put all the links and everything down below. I do have a discount code for them if you're interested. Just gonna skip to, it's basically like a tarot journal, but also a planner as well. I'm gonna use this as like a kind of structure, but you don't need to have this journal to do what I'm gonna do here. You could do it in a regular journal or just literally pull some cards or do some free journaling. It is totally up to you. So the full moon is in Sagittarius. Sagittarius, like as you can see from the symbol, is an arrow and it's a, um, a Jupiter ruled sign. And it is something that is very, about kind of truth and getting to getting on path, getting on purpose. And those are the themes that have been really coming up for me a lot at the moment. So you might find that that is the case for you too. It's like getting it aligned is very Jupiterian. It's like, I'm going to be on this particular path. And yeah, I feel like this is gonna be a really good time to pull some cards around like, where am I at right now? Where should I be? And like kind of seeing how to perhaps bridge the gap between those things if there is a gap between those things. I'm just gonna very quickly grab my honeycomb planner. Let me just show you the front. So this is the honeycomb planner. This is a completely personalized astrological almanac. If you're not an astrologer or like a student of astrology, this will probably look like gobbledygook to you, but I, it's really useful for seeing the in the back of mine I've got the lunation charts which gives you an actual chart like a birth chart before the full moon itself so I can look at this it says June 3rd on here for the full moon if you were in Australia I think you'd be, it would be on June the 3rd uh, for me in the UK in Wales it is going to be on the 4th of June which is actually my birthday as well so it feels like a really special and potent full moon for me this time round and here's the chart We've got Gemini rising for me, like this will be a different depending on your location. The time of the full moon, the, like the actual, when it happens, happens for all of us simultaneously across the whole of the earth. But it's just that like, because of our different time zones and stuff, our kind of like people organized time, it seems like it's a different time. So yeah, for me, it's at 4.41 a.m. Um, but if you're in a different time zone, it'll be a different time for you, but it's still happening at the same time, if you see what I mean, you know, the same kind of like actual time, it's just our, our time labels are different. Sometimes people find that confusing when they're first like working with moon stuff, they think that it is like different times in different places, but that's not the case. So... Yeah, here is the chart. And at the full moon, you always have the sun and the moon in opposite signs. We've got the sun here in Gemini. The sun is traveling through Gemini at the moment. My sun, my birth sun is in Gemini, obviously, because it's my birthday <laughs> on the 4th of June. And the moon is over here in Sagittarius. So Gemini is an air sign and Sagittarius is a fire sign. They're both mutable signs, which means that they change. Things can change quite quickly. They're very fluid. Uh, and like so the energy is very like quick changing which is great if you want to change courses because like when you've got much more fixed signs and it's more difficult to kind of channel that energy in a different direction whereas with the mutable signs you can make changes you can get yourself on track a lot more easily than you can with the fixed signs so yeah if you do find if you do um pull some cards or do do some like probing into how things are for you at the moment then you might find that um this is a really great time to actually make those adjustments yeah and like looking at this chart as a whole we've got the opposition between the sun and the moon we have that every full moon that's what this red line here in the middle is we've also got some other things going on we've got venus just at the tail end of cancer here which is a nice uh, a nice kind of supportive soothing kind of aspect which is great because the other thing you do get like gemini likes to talk is it very like uh active sign a very active sign and Sagittarius is also a very active sign so sometimes at this time you can get like our our nervous systems can get overstimulated so you might find that you know it's harder to relax <laughs> because it's just go 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 all the time with both of these signs so uh, having that Venus there is nice and calming there's also quite a lot of planets still in Taurus as well which is also like Taurus is fixed earth so that's a very calming influence as well although you know <laughs> Some of the planets aren't so much. I did, I did talk about this. I'm not going to go super in depth with it because I've talked about this over with my membership in the Moonwise Goddesses. So I'm not going to go, over, like I say, really into depth with that. But just for you to know that this Sagittarius moon is a time where change can be made more easily than it can at other times. And that especially in areas to do with like 
um, getting back on track. Whether that is like career wise, that seems to be what is coming up for me at the moment, but um, it could also be like health wise or it could be um, it, even in relationships and things like that. You know, whatever area of your life is being affected by this, it's for me, Oh, I, I'm not going to go into that because <laughs> that starts to get, that's the only thing with astrology. Like I made a whole series explaining a lot of this stuff with astrology. I'll try and remember to link that. But it's, it's really hard to like give just a snapshot without trying to explain. Well, I try to explain like why I'm not like, I don't like saying like, this is, the time is this now, but not giving any reason for it. So I like to kind of share my workings kind of thing. But it's really hard to do that without like dumping a load of information. So I'm not going to do it just to say, if you want, if you feel like you're kind of out of alignment at the moment, also we're kind of getting to halfway through the year now, so it's a good time to kind of do a reset. This is a really good, a really good moment with this moon. Everything's kind of aligning to get things back. Everything's aligning to get more aligned. So yeah, so I'm loving that energy of this. You know, it's a, it's a exciting, stimulating time. So you know, also be you know take care of your body, stay hydrated, stay try and keep, keep grounded if you can as well. If you tend to be somebody who can get overexcited a lot of nervous energy um then you'll need that at this time so yeah that is the chart let's pop that to one side so i'm gonna fill these things in but i'm actually gonna do that i think off camera because some of these things are a little bit more personal but i was looking back at uh the last the new moon in taurus which was on may 19th i think it might be may 20th actually for me as well because when we're working with the moon cycles, we like I work with the moon cycle from new moon back to dark moon, you know, so that is where the cycle. So the full moon for me is kind of like the peak of the cycle. And it's also the time when the tide changes and starts to like the energy starts to flow away instead of flowing towards. Um, well, it depends on your perspective. I've got a whole video about that as well. <laughs> so I was looking back at this and some of the things I realized like that like I say, it's kind of more um, my life path stuff, like my calling, what am I here to do? Who am I here to serve? Those are the kind of things that I've been working on over this moon cycle. And I have had some like things to release around that. And and I'm, I've made a video, which is going to be coming next week. I'm just kind of finishing editing it and stuff like that. So it'll come up, they'll be coming out next week about like how to actually release what no longer serves you, because that is definitely something that I have been working with myself over this, over this cycle. So I'm, I was, I looked at that as like a kind of in to inform this spread that we have here. And we've got these six questions. Where am I right now? What is influencing me? What have I created since the last new moon? So, you know, that's only two weeks. So it's not going to be masses and masses of stuff. What is no longer serving me? And, you know, <laughs> how can I let go and release this energy? And this is exactly what I talk about in that video. That I said that'll be coming next week is that kind of releasing. And then what can I learn during this cycle? You know, during this, this kind of end part of the cycle. So I'm going to use the Paulina Tarot. This is the box. It's by Paulina Cassidy. I love Paulina Cassidy's decks. I've got like five of her decks, I feel like. I, I think there is one that she's made that I haven't got, but I, I will probably get that. <laughs> I'm a bit of a Paulina Cassidy collector. This is just a mass market deck. It's by US Games. I believe. Yeah, US Games published by... It's easily accessible. I'll put a link down below for this deck if you're interested in it. But I find this... All of Paulina's decks I find very Gemini and we are sun in Gemini at the moment and I just I've been using this anyway so I feel like this is a good one to use let me show you some of the cards to use for this uh, cycle it's got like it's kind of whimsical which I find very Gemini kind of also like youthful which comes up playful uh, it's got that sort of vibe around it but like sometimes people talk about Paulina Cassidy's decks as being kind of soft and I don't find that. I find that even though the pictures look kind of pretty and they do, you know, like aesthetically, I really love her aesthetic of, of how she, her art style, but I find that it still delivers really, really good readings. So <laughs> I don't find it whole, it packs, you know, it doesn't hold any punches. It does, doesn't pull any punches. It does still um let you know when you need to like make changes and things like that so yeah it is that deck i don't tend to use this one as much her, my favorite one of hers is the called the joie de vivre which i use a lot 
but I'm trying to kind of not keep using my same few decks that I like to use and branching out into using more. And I found since I've been using the Ritual Planner actually that that has been happening a lot. So I've it's been easier to kind of uh, swap out decks because I'm kind of using one each week. Although that has kind of, I'm not as rigid about that now as I was when I first started using the planner. So yeah, I find with these things, they ebb and flow, don't they? You know, I was choosing decks for the moon cycles and then having like four decks and then using one each week in the moon cycle. And that was working really well. But for now, that doesn't seem to be working. I don't want to like swap out the decks then. Or sometimes I'll be like, oh, I've only used this deck for like four days, but I'm going to stick with it. And um, I'm going to swap it out anyway and use a different one. So yeah, that's all been changing and I find I've been finding things are changing and like let me know if you've been finding that too as well like things seem to be changing at a quicker pace now over these last say like eight weeks the last two moon cycles things seem to be changing more quickly I feel like but you know maybe that's just me <laughs> let me know how things have been for you whether you feel like whether you feel like you need a reset a realignment as well because I'm definitely feeling that vibe you know okay I did give these a little shuffle before but I can't not shuffle before I'm gonna do it so I'm actually gonna just uh shuffle and then I cut the deck and then I just take the cards one at a time off there I don't shuffle in between so <laughs> once it's done it's done and that feels done okay so here we go so where am I right now? And it's always a little bit vulnerable doing like a reading like this, <laughs> which is kind of personal, but which I think I find like from doing these full moons, I've done quite a few of these now um, and shared them. Like there seems to be like a collective resonance with it as well. So, and I think I'll probably pull a collective card at the end if I remember as well. So, okay, so Page of Cups, where am I at right now? Page of Cups, so it like, it all looks, look at this, this top bit, it all looks very kind of like sparkly and like, whoo, check this out, all the energy is like flowing, but then there's this almost like a, another entity underneath the surface with these two eels and these flowers, almost like hands, and it's as if like, this is what, like superficially I'm at right now, I'm like, oh yeah, things are going well, I'm doing this, but then there's this whole like, emotional underpinning <laughs> which like it doesn't look necessarily like uh evil or anything like that or like terrible but it's just something much bigger the things that I'm working on that might seem like fun and kind of superficial are underpinned by this like deeper emotional energy which is like not quite in my consciousness yet so yeah I feel like I am like starting to realize that there's this other big, big deal thing. And that is why I wanted to, you know, get realigned. This is why I wanted to do this because I wanted to, to like figure out what it is that, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this energy? What am I supposed to be bringing forward? What am I supposed to be sharing? What am I supposed to be teaching? You know, all those kind of things. There's something deeper. There's something beneath the surface that needs to bubble up now. You know, the page being the the sort of youngest of the courts, um, there's a kind of naivete about it and uh, an innocence. And also sometimes like, I feel almost like protective of the pages a little bit. And I'm like, this on my birthday, I'm gonna be 45 years old. So I'm not in that page stage of life now. You know, obviously we all are learners all the time. We're lifelong learners, but, I'm not naive. Well, some might say I am at that as well. <laughs> Maybe that's part of what I'm dealing with, you know, it's like I do still approach life with that kind of childlike attitude of wonder and excitement and like curiosity. And like, yes, perhaps that is to do with how my brain is functions, you know, but I think it's also to do with like, it's sometimes easier to deal with it like that rather than um tap into the deeper and sometimes more painful and not even just painful like just just more like sometimes overwhelming and I feel like I've got to a space now where I've kind of calmed my nervous system quite a lot I've been working on that with nutrition and stuff over the last year now and I feel like I I can I can cope with it 
So yeah, that's where I feel like I'm at right now. What is influencing me? Five of Wands. I'm pulling so many fives this year. It's just like fives, 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 fives all the time. I think that like it, it says 20, 23, but like the two and the three makes a five. And it's got that kind of like almost combative energy. And the Five of Wands is like the the fiery, like it's very on point for the moon in Sag with it being that kind of fire energy. It What's influencing me is like feeling like other people are better than me feeling like I need to like fight need to battle I need to like stake my claim on things I need to have different ideas I need to prove my ideas you know it's that kind of like sometimes the five of wands can be healthy competition as well you know but like I don't enjoy that I find conflict I never really find it that healthy i <laughs> i find it difficult so that's interesting that that is what is like influencing me at the moment and probably like personally it almost looks like it's like sort of crossed out with these wands here it's like my wand which is the one in the center that i am like kind of not wanting i'm not wanting to to put myself on the line i think that's what's influencing me i don't want to get involved in like the squabbles and the competition i want to just kind of like be but perhaps I can't, perhaps that is just like a, a naive, again, is that got that, that kind of Gemini naivety coming in there, um, way of being, like I have to interact in the world as it is, um, yes, I would love to change things, but I can't, um, do that overnight and like it's also not my job but that's not my, it's not my responsibility to have to change the whole world, but, um, I do have to get more involved sometimes with some things. Um, like there are also some things going on with um, my, my children are home educated. And at the moment here in Wales, the government are trying to put some very like overreaching methods in to control um, like what home educated children learn and stuff like that, which is something that I've ha I'm having to like step out of my comfort zone and, and contest. So yeah, I feel like that is kind of like going on around me at the moment. And then what have I created since the last new moon? And when I have this question, I always feel like, oh, not very much, because that was only, it felt like five minutes ago. <laughs> but then in reality, you know, I have created things. We've been doing house renovations. And I always seem to be saying about this because we just seem to permanently be doing them. But I feel like we're getting to the end of that now. We've been doing our hall stairs and landing and it's like pretty much done. And now we're going to be starting the garden stuff. But it's like, it does feel like almost like never ending these things to do. But then also I'm creating stuff um, you know, videos and stuff to share here. I'm creating um, readings for people on my website and I'm creating things to share in Circle of Kindred, in our Facebook group. Um, you know, there's lots of things and like stuff just for fun as well, like my journals and, and stuff like that. So there are things that I've been creating since the new moon, but yeah, I never know what it's going to be. <laughs> and that's so beautiful, like the sun. Um, I feel like what it's saying is like I'm creating and this is always what I aim to create is that I want to create like an atmosphere of strength of positivity of joy so that people can kind of come and be protected and be playful and find out who they are you know the sun is very much like our the heart of who we are and I that's so lovely that's that's made me feel really grateful and a bit tearful as well you know it's like yes I feel like I am that's my aim and so it feels like it's like validating the fact that yes you are creating these safe spaces for people to be able to try things and grow and and get to know themselves a bit more and to um to feel safe to make mistakes yeah yeah, and there's loads more. <laughs> you know, with it being a major, that's obviously a major, a major deal. And I feel like I have been going through some major stuff, like I say, in this in this moon cycle. And then there's the second part of the reading is more like about the sort of what is no longer serving kind of stuff. And that's the things that I'm gonna be letting go now in this waning part of the cycle. So after the full moon, as it as it wanes back to dark moon, I'm gonna be releasing these things. So let us have a look. What is no longer serving me? And we've got the Nine of Pentacles. Now, this card has been, like, slightly stalking, stalking me. And, like, you think the Nine of, Pe Nine of Pentacles is a beautiful card. So, it's like, why would that no longer be serving me? But, look, it is 
a person very much in their comfort zone and it's a gorgeous comfort zone it's a comfort zone that they have earned that they've worked hard to like create this beautiful space and it's safe it's protected there's friends there you know all of the bounty and gloriousness is all around her but she's also kind of in it like behind it and a little hidden and I think that is it that is no longer serving me is to keep myself to myself a bit too much and that is something that you know like I don't want to leave this comfort zone it looks beautiful <laughs> I love it so much but if I want to grow and I do if I want to you know get this Sagittarian realignment which I do I want to be um, reaching more people I want to be um, helping people with the things that I can help them with you know so yeah that feels like a kick up the ass to get out of my comfort zone yeah and like it was I was talking to a friend about this recently and she said she like she was saying that she feels like she needs to be in her comfort zone and that she hardly ever gets to be in her comfort zone because I think that like our general culture is like we should all be getting out of our comfort zones because, um, you know, like you have to get out of your comfort zone for personal growth. And you do have to get out of your comfort zone for personal growth, I think, because um, otherwise you, you're just staying with the things that you're doing at the moment, which, which literally means you can't grow. But we don't need to be growing all the time. Like you do that as a child, but as an adult, and even as a child, you don't do, you do it like in spurts. But we are like seasoned people and we have seasons where we get out of our comfort zone and we challenge ourselves you know and we have to do that kind of stuff because we need it for our growth and then we have times when we need to be in that comfort zone to restore and to heal and to like regulate our nervous systems I feel like I've taken that time to really be in my comfort zone over the last like year or so and now I'm I am ready to do that but I wanted to like say that because I feel like we're always told we should be getting out of our comfort zone all the time and that is not true for everybody all the time yeah um so I'll get off my soapbox <laughs> about that so that is what is no longer serving me how can I let go and release this energy so how can I step out of my comfort zone let's have a look and we've got the four of swords which is a strange um companion to that because you would think the four of swords would be a vote for being more restful and stuff but I think what he's saying is that I can um like yes I've got to step up my comfort zone but I've also got to be mindful to do it like a little bit at a time and to take breaks to take rest as well while I'm going along with it there's also lots of support here in the form of like bees and um there's an owl I think there in the background as well so it's like call on my guides as well to help me to do that to be able to do that energy two of the swords are up and two of the swords are down so it feels like two of the swords are like pointing upwards shooting that energy kind of outwards those thoughts and ideas outwards but then it's important that two of the swords are also placed in and down because the energy can also come down and be channeled back in so I feel like it's like how do I let go and release this energy? Well, I, I step out my comfort zone, I release that energy by doing a little bit of it and also not doing it. You know, it's not like I've got to just do that all the time. So that's really kind of funny after, you know, that little rant about my comfort zone. So yeah. <laughs> and then what can I learn during this cycle? Oh no. Okay, so we've got three of swords and last year I was pulling this card all the time so I feel like I know this card not this specific card from this deck because I didn't use this deck very much last year but it's that idea of like heartbreak of loss and transformation as well like I feel like I find this card very um resonant with the death card in general because it's like healing pain and you've got to feel and acknowledge that pain before you can um transform it i love like the mushrooms are here as well as like a kind of psychotropic little nudge and wink to sort of say you know there's support through like plants through um just the, nat the natural world even when things are really really difficult uh, as long as we're still alive 
even when it feels like our hearts are broken, you know, they they do heal and yes, the scars are there, but it kind of like opens it up more. Like they said, there's like more room in a broken heart. And so I feel like that's what I'm learning in this cycle is like to kind of face my feelings and to allow them to to change me, you know? Um, and yes, that is probably not going to be fun. <laughs> But such, you know, so it is, that is some, you know, if we were all just sons all the time, then we wouldn't appreciate that gorgeous, like radiant energy when we have it. Yeah. So I'm not going to actually write this up in here now. I, now, while you're here, I have got these stamps as well, which I use to stamp in the cards and things like that in journal. But I wanted to just share some of that and I'm going to pull a card for you guys as well. Let me get a different deck. Hang on, let me grab a deck. Okay. I'm going to use this. This Dark Days Tarot. Which seems maybe a bit of a strange choice for the full moon, but there are lots of... It's, a, it's like a moony type of deck. So I think I'm going to take two cards as like a collective reading. Yeah, this is a square deck. This is an indie deck, but I believe it's still available. She's brought out a couple of others since she made this one as well. I think they're available on her website. I'll try and remember, like I said, to link everything that I'm using in the description box. It's got this gorgeous, like, silver gilding. And it's, I've used this deck quite a lot, and this gilding is still in really good condition, so I think that... It's, you know, it's nice, it's nice cardstock. Okay. So two cards for the collective. Okay. And we've got a major. We've got the Hermit. Interesting. And like in this Hermit, it's very much like a spiral card. So we've got these gorgeous like moon cycle, moon spiral card here. And she's almost like in this snail shell so it's like kind of retreating back into the shell and I find that so interesting with this nine of pentacles as it being like the hermit is very much about kind of like getting quiet getting to yourself so that you can um figure things out like from what's inside fi figuring out the mysteries inside because when we learn the mysteries inside then that then extrapolates out to to make us understand the mysteries outside as well, you know? And like, that's the idea after the hermit, you know, you do have to re-enter and become um, integrated into society again. Yeah, so we've got the hermit card. So that's, we've got a major there. Let's see what else. Okay, the six of wands. So that is a gorgeous card to like celebrate, again, like the moon cycles. The moons are on all of these cards because it is a moon oriented deck I usually use it with my moon practice and look at these gorgeous roses and stuff here it's like gifts offerings and um, celebration and look how the woman's like arms are actually like the mountains so I feel like this is a very much um yes to celebrate yourself to celebrate your like physical presence your creativity your just basic wonderfulness you know take some time to go inward and figure out like figure things out and but also celebrate outwardly as well like this is amazing but I'm also seeing this as having like a double meaning as well so that it's like we should be offering gifts to like mother earth now so perhaps um you could make like a small ritual where you take something that you've made something creative that you've perhaps like birthed whilst doing this um hermit phase and then offer it to mother earth so maybe it's like um, like a little nature weaving or something that you've made or like a, a beautiful flower that you just take and leave as an offering by a tree or a rock or something like that. Um, a way of being in the flow with everything else and like gifts, receive giving and receiving of gifts is very much um, celebrating. It, it's reminds us of the of the give of the reciprocity the way that the world is supposed to be you know like it's not set up like that capitalism has kind of like messed that up for us but that is still the truth of it beneath it all so we can be that we can celebrate ourselves we can celebrate mother earth we can celebrate flow that there are cycles of inward 
and there are cycles of outward. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that reading. Thank you so much for watching. Warmest, warmest blessings. And I will see you very soon.